Good day, everybody, and welcome to the One Lonely Owl podcast. My name is Terry, and I will be your host. Thank you so much for joining me. I know I've been away for a little bit, but I just wanted to jump back on here and say thank you to everybody who stuck around. Thank you to anyone who maybe sent me some well wishes, because I did get a bunch of those. I really do appreciate each and every one of those messages, comments, likes, subscribes, all those things. Um, Instagram DMs, I do really appreciate you. So thank you so much for, for joining me and thank you so much for reaching out. If you are new here, this is a podcast primarily about knitting. Uh, I'll talk about knitting that I've done past, present, and future. I will also address any other current craft projects that I have on the go, which, spoiler alert, I don't have any today. But um, if you are a returning viewer, like I said, thank you so much for sticking around and thanks so much for being here with me throughout this journey. I currently live in central Alberta, Canada. I am from Newfoundland, Canada, uh, so there will be little uh, quips, sayings and things in here that you may not recognize and I appreciate you for sticking around and learning what those mean. Uh, each, of my sub, um, each of my segments are named after Newfoundland terms, so I will do my best to try to describe what those mean, and if I skip something, I'll put things below, which I just realized my last podcast. I actually haven't even uploaded the show notes yet, so I'll do that this time. If you are new here, you may not know the elephant in the room, which is I have been diagnosed three separate times with cancer in 15 months, and I am going through my cancer journey throughout this podcast with you as my audience. Um, like I did say earlier, this is a knitting podcast primarily, but um, it's hard to mention, it's hard to do any of that without mentioning the fact that I look like a chemo patient because I am a chemo patient. Today we're going to discuss uh, a couple of projects that I still have on the needles. One that has been languishing for quite some time. If you are a returning viewer, you've heard me talk about the flax light in depth um, since the beginning of the podcast, I think. I will also address um, some of the things that I've been wearing and uh, mostly some things that I've been reading and watching. So with that, we're just going to dive right in. As always, my show notes are just off down here to the corner, so I will be referring to those at, uh, throughout the podcast, so you may see me looking down into the corner every once in a while. Like I said, welcome back. It has been four weeks. I typically podcast on a two-week, on a bi-weekly basis. This particular session of chemo that I had at the beginning of March was quite struggle. Was quite the struggle for me, so I did not podcast two weeks ago, and uh, I've just made a little post on YouTube to share that I would be returning, and here I am. So again, thank you so much for joining me again, and apologies that it has been four weeks since my last podcast. The third session of chemo, um, just to sort of give you a little bit of context, generally the first session of chemo is not awesome. No sessions with chemo are. Anyone out there that has had chemo therapy will know and will probably relate to what I'm saying. But the first session, not great. The second session, a little bit worse. And the third session really knocked me on my butt. So I was mostly horizontal for the better part of two weeks. And um, the timing just didn't land for me with uh, getting on here to podcast. Quite honestly, it didn't really, I didn't get up to much, which you will see in the um, in the sections where I talk about what I've been up to and what I finished, you'll see that it's not a lot because I have had very little energy and I've been doing a lot of sleeping. The first segment that we're going to talk about today, I am happy to announce, is back in the docket called Mug Up. Mug Up is where we talk about what I'm drinking. I hadn't been drinking pretty much anything but water because the chemotherapy had been screwing with my taste buds and making things taste funny. But today I had a cup of tea and it tasted absolutely lovely. So I had a, I'm having a second cup of tea. You will see this one. If you look back in previous episodes, this is what I call my old faithful. It's a cup of Tetley tea with a little bit of sugar and a bit of milk in an old Pyrex um, mug. I think they're called Pyrex or Corel. I'm not totally sure. 
this is my favorite type of mug, my favorite cup of tea in that mug, and I am so happy to have my taste buds back and have things be tasting like normal. So that's what you'll see me drinking on this episode. And that's it for Mug Up. The next segment is called La, which is look at what she's wearing. La is short for look. So I'm going to show you what it is that I'm wearing. I've taken off a sock because it's a lot easier to show you the sock on camera than it is for me to show it to you on my foot. I don't recall what year this was, but I believe this was Flota. I think it's how you pronounce it. It is a commercial sock yarn that they release each Christmas. I don't know if they do any other colorways, to be honest, because I only buy the Christmas ones. I have a I have an obsession with Christmas socks. So it is a self-patterning Christmas colorway sort of... Don't focus on that. There we go. And it's probably my favorite commercial sock yarn. Um, I don't have... I love... I love all sock yarn. I'm, it's one of my favorite things to knit our socks. So I do have a ton and, um, and I don't know if you can see behind me that shelf right there, the bottom shelf, which I cover most of it with when I'm sitting, is full of sock yarn. And I mentioned it in my previous episode where I may actually ask for some opinions on some of the sock yarns. I haven't had a chance to actually go through the sock yarns that I have in other places, but I'm wondering if I might cast on a new pair and uh, I'll get your opinions on which one you might like to see on the needles next. So, Flota sock yarn on my feet in my favorite pair of socks. The pattern that I use is a vanilla pattern that is sort of my own sock recipe. I start with, my gosh, I haven't cast on a pair of socks in so long, I can't remember, either a 12 or a 16 stitch Turkish cast on. I think a 12 stitch Turkish cast on. I increase to 72 stitches on a two millimeter needle and I knit a whole tube till I get to the ribbing. I do the ribbing and then I go back and cut in a heel and I do a um, regular like slip slip knit decrease. Slip slip knit, knit two together every other round to get to 12 stitches and then I Kitchener the um, heel together. So that's how I generally do it. So that is the recipe that I use for these socks. It's the recipe that I use for most socks. And I have talked about it ad nauseum. If you look in every single episode, I think I have mentioned that vanilla sock recipe. The other thing that I'm wearing today is it may actually look familiar because you may have seen me working on, um, which I will show in whips, although I haven't done any work on it. I'm working on my free your fade shawl but this is one of the this is the free this is the original free your fade the og original gangster free your fade it is done with polka dot creek it was a kit it was a very old kit i can't even tell you where or when i bought it it was ages and ages ago it was way before she had a storefront so it was probably at um a yarn what are they called when they get together and they do like a craft fair, but a yarn, yarn specific. Whew, cancer really screws with your brain power. Um, anyway, you're probably all screaming at me about the place where all the yarn people go and they all set up a table and... <laughs> anyway, that's probably where I got it last time. So it was a kit of three separate colors. There is a sort of a light purple, grayish, a darker purpley gray and then uh, deep dark purple. I knit this ages and ages ago. Again, it's Free Your Fade by Andrea Mowry. I am knitting a second one. I have not worked on any of it, but you'll see it in whips. Let's see. That is the segment called La. We're going to head straight into what he at. What he at is where we talk about the things that I am working on. And of course, I put them just out of reach. Just a sec. Professional podcaster here. 
So actually first, before I show you the things that I actually worked on, I am going to show you the free or fade that I had been working on and what I was working on. What I had had it put had put it in. So this is the darkest purpley color. Like I said, I have not done any progress on this since the last time I showed it to you. But that's what it will look like when it's finished. And because I talked about them, this is the darkest purple color. And that is really showing true to color because I've got some really good natural light here today. I just realized I didn't plug in my microphone, so the audio might not be as good as it normally is. Apologies for that. That's the second purple. And I do not recall any of these names, so I will apologize in advance. I think this one's called Gray. Again, not totally sure, but it is a gray color with a bit of a hint of a purple. Can't exactly tell. I'm pretty sure it's just gray, but when you put it with the other purples, it looks like there's purple in it. That is living in my Hohi Locatelli Pampa bucket bag, which I also love. Like two of my fav three of my favorite things in one place. Andrea Maori's design, Hohi Locatelli's bag, and Polka Dot Creek yarn. This one is kind of one that I just have on the go. I'm thinking I might just do it as a gift knit for somebody who um, who appreciates knitting. I have nobody in mind in particular, but it is just for um, sort of that easy when I don't have the brain space to think, don't want to work on something that's hard. This is what is kind of my go-to. But like I said, I did not work on that project at all in the last four weeks. The next... Now, these were called my chemo socks. I called them my chemo socks because they were in my bag and they were with me wherever I went when I went to the hospital. Excuse me. I have talked about this before. There is a perfect temperature for a cup of tea. My cup of tea is at that temperature right now, so you might see me drinking it a little bit more than I normally would, chugging it back even, because um, I don't want it to get too cold. So, chemo socks. They were in my chemo bag, which is why they were called my chemo socks. They are living in my wireframe bag by So Shannon. I will link everything that I talk about today in the show notes, which you will find in the description box right below this video. This is the National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation bag that Shannon did for the Countdown to Christmas calendar with Polka Dot Creek and 24 other indie dyers in Alberta and Canada. You have seen this one before. This one is the almost finished object, the almost half finished object. It just needs a heel. So it, I said it last time that it was a fit, uh, half finished object, which it totally isn't. It's, that's the colorway that came from Polka Dot Creek, which matches the bag. And I'm a dork like that, so that's why I have those in there. I am using the self-striping yarn, the National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation self-striping yarn from Polka Dot Creek, and I'm also using a mini from Polka Dot Creek, which I believe is just gray, and it matches the gray stripe that is in the bag, or in the sock, rather. The heel will also be the same color. The... Next thing that you will see is the progress that I have made on the sock. So I, like I said earlier in the introduction, I haven't had a ton of knitting mojo. I quite honestly have done very little knitting in the last little while. I've had a lot of time sleeping, a lot of time at doctor's appointments, at the hospital, things like that. So um, I will apologize in advance if you're expecting a ton of activity and a lot of progress because you won't see that. Uh, but I did make some progress, and I'm very happy and proud to show the progress that I did make. So the progress keeper shows, I think, where I was when I showed it to you the last time. So when I showed it to you on the podcast before, the progress keeper was here, and I moved it to where I was at that time. And now we have almost finished sock, and I do normally a 15-row, um, a 15-round ribbing and we are at what are we at one two three four five six seven eight nine so I have six more rows to go on the ribbing and then I will cut in for both heels 
again using this gray as the contrast color. In the original sock set that uh, Shelly had produced, I believe it was a chocolate mini that she had. I'm a bit anal when it comes to matching my socks and heels and things, so I found one in my stash that I had that matched one of the colors in the sock. And it, pardon me, it worked out really well. So that are, those are my vanilla socks. I already talked about my vanilla sock recipe, so it's the exact same. Um, Turkish cast on, increase, 72 stitches, 15 rounds of 2 by 2 rib, cut in the heel, and graft the toe together, or graft the heel together. So that is that. Super exciting. Work in progress number one. I don't know if I said this in the introduction or not, but spoiler alert, there are no finished objects this time around. Like I said, I have not been feeling the best, so um, yeah, you have to bear with me that there aren't any finished objects to share. Um, and I'm, I know you're all so excited to see the progress that I've made on my flax light. I've been talking about my flax light for months, probably over a year that I've been working on it, but I've been talking about it on the podcast since the very beginning, I'm pretty sure. So I did some work on my flax light and I will share with you that although we're in what yet, there is also a small little segment of frig off rotted not fit, which I will get to in a moment. But before um, I get to where I made some mistakes, I'm going to show you where I am today. So this is the Flax Light by Tin Can Knits, one of my favorite um, one of my favorite designers. And like I said, been working on it for months, and I'm finally at a place where the here we go. I will share all of the yarn and all that in a moment, but I just wanted to sort of show you where I was with the progress. The sleeve, look at how good that sleeve looks. It's a bit wrinkly because I had it all folded up and I haven't worked on it in a little while. So this is where I am today. Almost finished one sleeve and not even close to starting the other sleeve, but I will when I get there. Now, if I can find the photo, and I'm pretty sure I will, I will post a photo right here where I will show you why I had to rip back the first sleeve. So I had done, I thought, a lot of progress on the first sleeve. It turns out that it wasn't as much as I thought. It was only a couple of inches. But you will see that there is a line, and again, if I can find the photo, I'll put it here. I decided that I was going to alternate skeins, but I had a small amount of a previous skein that had, you know, a couple of inches maybe of yarn left once knitted. It turned out that it was much lighter than any of the other skeins that I had. It wasn't noticeable in the body because I was alternating every row. Um, but when I only had this much of it in the sleeve and then I alternated other skeins, it was really, really, really noticeable. And again, I will have posted a photo here and probably kept it up there while I'm talking about it. It was very, very drastically visible. So I ripped it out and started the sleeve with two brand new skeins or one brand new skein and the other one was one of the other darker ones. And so that's why um, the sleeve, quite honestly, why the sleeve isn't finished yet. So... Flax Light by Tin Can Knits. This one is living in my Her Leather Co. bag, which is... Uh, Her Leather Co. is a sort of local to me, a Calgary-based crafter um, who... or artisan. I'm not exactly sure what you would call her, but this bag is absolutely delicious. So if you are interested in looking at these types of bags and if you have it in your budget, I would strongly urge you to take a look at Her Leather Co. because she makes some really quality products. So that's living in my Her Leather Co. bag and it's finally getting some progress. So I'm really super excited to share that with you. All right, let's see where we're at. 
I already talked about Frig Off Rotted Not Fit. We did What Are You At? And we're going to skip right over Yes Buy because like I said, I don't have any projects that are finished for this, this episode. All right, the next segment is called Twacking. Twacking is where I talk about what I have been purchasing. Now, I did make a plan with myself, I guess, to uh, not buy anything, especially yarn related in 2024. And the reason being, you can't see it, but over here, this whole section is, I mean, there are some yarn things here, mostly of like decoration and they're aesthetically pleasing. There's a whole section of sock yarn right below me, but over in that corner of my room, there is an obscene amount of yarn, hand dyed, acrylic, um, commercial, all kinds of things. So I made a pact with myself that I wasn't going to buy anything in 2024 unless it was like necessary. And quite honestly, so far I have not been able to find anything that has been necessary. So we're going to stick with that goal for now. And the reason I wanted to mention it in twacking is because I'm really, really proud of myself. So I have no problem buying yarn. As you will well know, most crafters have no problem buying things that will give them joy. And um, I've even seen some memes where it says buying yarn and working with yarn. So crochet or knitting or whatever, or buying fiber and working with fiber are two totally different hobbies. So I will say that um, I have no um, qualms with anybody who decides that they want to buy things that make, that bring them joy. Um, I personally had filled my yarn room to the brim and I'd had enough and I have so many wonderful, beautiful projects that could, or so many wonderful, beautiful materials that could make beautiful projects. I decided that I was going to put a hold on any purchases. And so far I've been doing pretty well. And I've been very, very proud of it. So that's why I wanted to mention that in twacking. Again, no judgment. You want to be a yarn hoarder like me, you go right ahead and purchase all the yarn that you want. There's no judgment here. Um, the next segment is called Now to Once. Now to Once is where we talk about something that I'm going to do in the future. So Now to Once in Newfoundland means I'll get to it. Now to Once. I'll get to it in a minute. Um, so... In this segment today, I'm going to talk about the flax light. I really want to get my flax light finished so that I can wear it in the spring where it's cool but not to not really cold uh, because it is a fingering weight sweater. I decided that I wanted to sort of put a push on to get it finished before it was too hot to wear. The other, um, and again, I've said this before, I'm not pressuring myself. I'm not one to pressure myself into get something finished. I am not a process Wait, I'm not a product knitter. I'm a process knitter. I like to knit just for fun. Um, and if I'm going to be knitting, I might as well be knitting something that I can wear at the end of it, but quite or use. Quite honestly, I don't care if it gets done this spring or not. Um, and to be honest, I will just also address the fact that I... So I had a hemithyroidectomy done in May of last year, and I don't know that I've mentioned that one very much because it was quick and easy. It was diagnosis, surgery, and then all finished with this one. So I haven't talked about this cancer very much. Um, but since then, I have gained a fair amount of weight, I think probably because of the lack of my, like half of my thyroid's missing. Um, I also wonder if that might be why I'm so tired. But anyway, the the fact of the matter is I have put on a bunch of weight and some of the sweaters that I currently own may not fit me, including the flax light. When I started knitting that sweater, I was probably close to 10 kilos lighter. So um, for anyone out there that doesn't measure in kilos, that was like 20, 22 pounds. So I have put on some weight. I'm not happy about it, but it is what it is. And so if I finish that sweater and it doesn't fit me, Maybe I will, it will be a gift for somebody. My sister-in-law, maybe. She is, she's quite lovely and I love her to pieces. So it would have to go to somebody that would appreciate it if it doesn't fit me. Or maybe I could block the living daylights out of it. <laughs> it will fit, who knows. Uh, refer to episode 15 where I talk about the wonders of blocking. So the flax light, I want to finish that. The, if I'm going to be knitting something else, if I'm going to be casting on something, it doesn't really make a ton of sense 
uh, to me that I want to cast on something with chunkier yarn. So like either worsted or above because it's not going into that time of year. Like we're headed into spring and soon to be summer. So it doesn't really make a ton of sense for me to want to knit big things, big thick items. But I just, I've been knitting on so many fingering weight things. Like I've been knitting with socks and shawls and a fingering weight sweater. I have a, I have an inkling. I want to, I have an urge to knit something chunky. So I might go straight to just knitting a bunch of dishcloths because that is kind of my palette cleanser. And pardon me, it is uh, worsted weight yarn. So who knows, maybe that's where I'll end up. But if anyone has any ideas, I know a worsted weight skirt is not in my future. So I know I mentioned that I really do want to knit a skirt. I just don't have it in me to cast on another fingering weight project at this point. And last but not least, the final episode or the final segment of the episode is called Jigs and Reels. Jigs and Reels in Newfoundland are songs and dances. And uh, in this, in the context of how I use it here, it's things that I'm listening to, watching, or reading. So listening to is kind of where the, the songs and dances came in, like the music that I'm listening to. Um, so that's where Jigs and Reels came in. But I just wanted to share, quite honestly, I haven't been listening to a ton of music. I've been listening to an awful lot of audiobooks and um, I've been watching and reading other things. So, Jigs and Reels. Today we're going to talk a little bit about, like I said, a bunch of books mostly and a couple of shows. So the first book that I'll mention is Louise Penny, A Great Reckoning. If you are new here, you will not know, but I'm a big fan of Louise Penny. She's a Canadian author who writes the uh, Armand Gamache series. He is a um, character who works in, basically it's like a cozy murder mystery, so a cozy murder mystery series. I believe A Great Reckoning is book 13 or 14 maybe in that series. Really enjoying it. Always enjoy Louise Penny. It's a bit of a it's a bit of a palate cleanser for me as well when I'm listening or watching books or listening or reading books that are heavier for me. I, I like to return back to Louise Penny and it warms my, warms my soul. So I really appreciate that one. Again, that was Louise Penny by, uh, A Great Reckoning by Louise Penny. The next that I'm reading, I'm listening to on an audio book is called Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. Um, really, really close. I'm really, um, early on into the book, so I haven't read a ton of it. Uh, enjoying it so far, again, seems like it's going to be a nice palate cleanser, not not too hard, not too stuffy, not too difficult for me to get through, not too many triggers, I'm hoping. Uh, maybe in another life. So I just finished the audiobook by Taylor Jenkins Reid called Maybe in Another Life. That one, I uh, really enjoyed it. It's a book where there's two separate stories. So one character, if this happens, they go down this path. If this happens, they go down this path. I really enjoyed it. Love Taylor Jenkins Reid. If, again, you are new here, you wouldn't know that. But if you've been a returning viewer, you will hear me talk about Taylor Jenkins Reid. Almost always, because I always have a book um, by Taylor on the go. Usually an audiobook, but that one was a good one. The other one that I have done, read in the time that I've seen since the last time I saw you was One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So the story is the character falls in love, gets married, the husband disappears, and she falls in love again, is about to get married, and the husband returns. And what happens there? I won't obviously spoil it for you, but it was a really interesting perspective. And it kind of keeps you on your toes because you're not exactly sure what the character is going to choose. Audrey O'Drain. I believe is how you pronounce their name. Um, I had been reading this one the last time I spoke with you and I shared that I was early in the book and it was a little bit dark. It was very dark. I'm not sure I'm going to read other books by this person. It was, it was hard. It was hard for me to get through and I don't exactly know what, if I was warning you for trigger warnings, I wouldn't exactly know what to tell you. Um, I wouldn't know what to warn you about. It just, really sat. It was a tough, it was a tough book for me to get through. Um, I enjoyed it, so to speak. Like I, I, like I said, I probably won't read anything else by that author again, just because it was really, really heavy until I'm in a better state of mind. 
once you know once I'm out of the woods with all of this business maybe I'll feel a little bit better and a little bit more confident and a little less triggered but right now I'm not exactly sure that this is this author is for me um, and I think I said the author was Ashley O'Drain and the book was called The Push and finally, last but not least, the things that the show that I have been watching, I mentioned one the last time called Three Pines. I'm pretty sure I finished that one, the season of that when I spoke to you last. So if I hadn't at that point, I have now finished watching that the season of Three Pines, which is a show on Amazon Prime and it is based on the books by Louise Penny. So obviously I'm going to enjoy that and watch that. I really did enjoy that book or that show. And last night I finished the season six of The Crown. I never really considered myself to be much of a follower of the monarchy, but uh, I really did enjoy that show. I enjoyed the take on sort of the how they portrayed what happens behind closed doors. I was I find myself often wondering like how do they know what the Queen thinks or says or what. Prince William, how Prince William and Kate Middleton found each other and like I, j I just found it really interesting. The research that must have went into it I thought was really interesting. Um, if you are a fan of that show or uh, Three Pines or any of the other things that I've mentioned in previous episodes and you have any recommendations for shows that I should watch please leave them in the comments below. I have sort of run out of television shows to watch and um, I had been watching some some uh, we'll call it reality TV, but I use the word reality in uh, quotations because I would I would hazard a guess that there's a little bit more scripting than there is uh, reality. But I've been watching a few reality television shows, and and um, those are over too. But again, not something that's really quality television. <laughs> so uh, yeah, if you have any recommendations for shows that I might like, murder mysteries or monarchy type things. Um, please leave them in the description box below. So, or not in the description box, in the comments below so that I might find something else to watch. That is that. That is another sort of short and sweet episode for you. I thank you so much for joining me today. Again, I apologize that I was, I was a while. Um, I was busy taking care of myself and getting the rest that I needed. I uh, spent some time in my office doing some loading up some photos and getting all of our photos you know doing a little bit of administrative work and things like that but that was basically the extent of what I had done. I am looking forward. I'm looking forward to being back. I'm looking forward to having some time to edit this video and spending some time with you on YouTube. If you liked this video or if you've decided that you've seen any of the other videos and you like them, please go ahead and like those videos. Subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell icon so that you can be notified anytime there is new content uploaded. I, Like I said, I will also post posts on YouTube if necessary, if there's things that I need to share with the audience. Um, oh, and I forgot to look. While we're here, I'm going to look and see how many subscribers that there are. Uh, just wanted to say like a huge thank you. I mentioned it the last time. It just brings me a lot of joy to know that there are a, a random audience of total strangers that sit and watch me. 126! 126 subscribers! The last time I mentioned it, it was 113. So we've gotten 13 subscribers in a month. Um, yeah, so I mentioned that it was it's a lot of fun for me. I really enjoy doing this. I really enjoy the whole process. I love the community that we've commu that we've um, put together here. I love that it's growing. I don't particularly do this for any other reason other than just selfishly for myself to have fun with you and you know maybe meet some new friends. I think that that would be really neat. I don't have any real intention of having this grow to be a massive thing but obviously if it does it does but um yeah really appreciate each and every one of the 126 of you that keeps coming back to say hello and to spend some time with me i hope i was able to bring you some joy today as always uh i've already forgotten what i normally say <laughs> oh goodness it's been a month right so i'm allowed to cheat what do i normally say 
Keep living your best life, filling up your cup, and I will see you in t a couple of weeks. Until, until then, stay where you're to till I comes where you're at. Bye.